The collection of scumbags known as Creation Ministries International recently put out a pamphlet called Question Evolution containing 15 questions that supposedly attack the basis of evolutionary theory and that's been brazenly peddled by the group of tosspots known as P.P. Simmons. Lapkind77 has organized a collaborative response from a collection of excellent YouTubers and this is my contribution. Please check out the video description for links to all the other users and their responses and consider subscribing to them. I'm responding to question 5 and this particular piece of crap goes like this. How did new biochemical pathways which involve multiple enzymes working together in sequence originate? Every pathway and nanomachine requires multiple protein enzyme components to work. How did lucky accidents create even one of these components, let alone 10 or 20 or 30 plus at the same time, often in a necessary programmed sequence? Evolutionary biochemist Franklin Harold wrote, we must concede there are presently no detailed Darwinian accounts of the evolution of any biochemical or cellular system, only a variety of wishful speculations. It really is difficult to express the number of levels on which this question fails. In fact, it's so loaded with ignorance and misinformation that it wouldn't surprise me if at any minute it collapsed under the gravitational field generated from the sheer weight of stupid that it contains. Of course, none of this comes as a shock since the question originates in part from the despicable YouTubers known as P.P. Simmons who I've demonstrated time and time again in previous videos are nothing but dishonest, dishonorable purveyors of vile and disgusting lies. The fact that these con artists are now teamed up with the equally reptilian group known as Creation Ministries International to produce this pamphlet of extra glossy toilet paper perhaps explains its unusually intense concentration of crap. With that said, I'll now explain why this question fails in every way imaginable and why you'd be better off not reading the rest of this document and instead putting it to much more productive use. Firstly, the question itself commits the logical fallacies of the arguments from ignorance and personal disbelief. This again is no surprise since this faulty reasoning is a favorite approach of most creationists. The fact that the questioner is unaware of how such biological pathways may have evolved says absolutely nothing about whether they did or not, it only speaks to their colossal ignorance on the subject and or their willingness to blatantly lie about it. In fact, just the most cursory of searches in the scientific literature reveals dozens of peer-reviewed publications in exactly this field. So while creationists might consider this to be a deep and intractable mystery, it seems that the professionals who've dedicated their lives to training and working in these areas do not. Of course, in response, the creationist will predictably find an intricate biochemical pathway whose evolutionary heritage has not been fully mapped out in detail and claim that it's impossible to believe that the said pathway arose via evolution. The creatard's incredulity at this possibility once again has no bearing on the truth content of the claim, but again, this is a typical creationist tactic. Instead of attempting to generate evidence to demonstrate that such pathways cannot evolve, creationists merely assert that they cannot and expect to be taken seriously. Secondly, the implication that such metabolic pathways arose solely by lucky accidents clearly demonstrates either an Olympian level of dishonesty from the creationist or that when it comes to evolutionary biology, he can't distinguish his gluteus maximus from his articulatio cubiti. Since we're at least dealing in part with P.P. Simmons here, both possibilities may equally apply, but there's little doubt that this statement is indeed seasoned with a generous sprinkling of deceit. In reality, no scientist claims that evolution is a random process because the random element of mutation is shaped by the distinctly non-random process of natural selection, something which professional liars like these are determined to ignore. I've personally pointed this out to P.P. a number of times in my rebuttals to the seemingly endless torrent of verbal sewage emanating from their YouTube channel, and yet they seem to be intent on ignoring this critical linchpin of evolutionary theory and instead propagating their grotesque mischaracterization of it. Thirdly, it's perhaps understandable why the idiot asking this question can't understand how multi-step pathways arose at the same time, because creationists are the only ones who believe that complex biological systems can pop into existence ex nihilo, fully intact and functional. Their inability to distinguish their belief in magic from the tenets of evolutionary biology therefore only serves to highlight the sheer magnitude of their intellectual atrophy. Of course, such systems didn't appear fully formed, but evolved gradually by discrete steps that built on pre-existing metabolic functions to provide competitive advantages to their organisms. We've observed the appearance of such discrete functions in the present day, 
both in the laboratory by the development of the ability to utilize citric acid as an energy source in bacteria grown under the appropriate selective pressures, and in the wild by the appearance of novel enzymes capable of allowing bacteria to utilize nylon oligomers as carbon sources. Furthermore, in the latter case, this evolution has not only been replicated in the laboratory, but two new and distinct nylonase enzymes have been identified in one bacterium in the wild, therefore clearly showing the evolution of a two-step pathway in barely one human lifetime. With such demonstrable and empirical evidence in hand, how big a leap is it really to imagine the evolution of more complex pathways over periods measured in billions of years? Fourthly, this argument also hints that evolution of sequential pathways is impossible because such systems are irreducibly complex. This argument completely ignores the fact that irreducible complexity is a description of the current state of a given biological system and not its evolutionary heritage. For example, consider a cell that requires two compounds, A and B, from its environment to survive. A new function arises that allows the cell to convert A to B, and since A is abundant and B is not, the cell gains a competitive advantage and the function is propagated in future generations. Imagine now that the cell loses the function to take up B. Since it can still produce B from A, the loss of function mutation is silent and may eventually become fixed in the population due to genetic drift. At this point, the metabolic pathway of A to B becomes irreducibly complex, but of course has not always been so. These concepts aren't very difficult to understand and yet creationists absolutely refuse to recognize or acknowledge their existence and instead insist on building their ludicrous straw men and attacking weaknesses in evolutionary theory that simply aren't there. Because at the end of the day they're simply not interested in the truth, only in affirming their own pre-established and absolutely immovable position. Finally, if you happen to be a creationist with a genuinely open mind or someone who's undecided on the matter, I'd like you to consider the quote from Franklin Harold given at the end of this passage. While at face value it does indeed seem damning, notice that it begins with a lowercase w and yet doesn't indicate any preceding text with an ellipsis. There's a reason for that and that's presumably because the authors of this deceptive little rag didn't want you to realize that this line from Harold's book, The Way of the Cell, is preceded by the words, we should reject as a matter of principle the substitution of intelligent design for the dialogue of chance and necessity, but this putrid and foul quote mine should quite clearly demonstrate that these individuals are willing to plunge neck deep into the sewage of their own making in order to perpetuate their filthy little lies and underscores the dishonesty and ignorance I've been pointing out throughout this video. But I don't want you to take my word for it. I urge you to take some time and sit down at a computer and check for yourself using reliable and unbiased sources. If you do that with a truly open mind, you'll very quickly discover that your god is a lot more impressive than the petty conjurer being peddled by these charlatans who are lying to you in order to propagate their archaic and demonstrably ludicrous beliefs, while quite possibly picking your pockets into the bargain.